Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us today for the My XO End of Financial Year training webinar. Okay, today's agenda that we're going to cover in this webinar, um, we're just going to talk about any ATO updates that are coming out, um, how to do your affordable fringe benefits, reconciling your payroll for the end of financial year, which involves checking your postings, your leave entitlements and provisions and superannuation, and single-touch payroll doing a finalisation declaration, and then we'll have a question and answer session at the end. So the ATO updates have come out and you would have all received an email about the new release that's come out recently. Um, and if you haven't booked in for your upgrade yet and you want to, please let us know and we can get you booked in for that. We've got slots filling up very fast. So you will need to have the compliance update installed in time to do your first pay run in July. Um, but you can do it earlier than your last payroll in June if you want to. The um, new rates won't be applied unless your pay date, your physical pay date, is the 1st of July or late. And so the compliance release update contains new tax tables, new Medicare levy exemptions um, and rates, um, an annualisation for study and training support thresholds, the figures for those are all in the release notes. And the super guarantee rates will increase to 11.5%. So you can update those manually if you want to on your super funds, but if you have quite a few of them, it can take a bit of time. So if you wait until you create your first pay run with a physical pay date of the 1st of July or later, then it will automatically prompt you to update all of your super guarantees to 11.5%. If you're not doing 11.5%, if you're doing higher, then I would probably do the manual updates prior to that happening. Um, so there will be manual updates required to be done for the below items that I've got on the list here. So for the maximum super contributions base, the quarterly thresholds will need to be updated manually on those super funds, um, and also your ETP thresholds and your child support protected earnings amounts. Those are all in the release notes as well. And there are screenshots there on how to update those. But by all means, if you get stuck, um, log a support case and we can help you with that. And if you pay um, employees in Victoria and you've got state payroll tax related to that, there are also changes for Victoria in this tax compliance update. You will be receiving a copy of these slides and there's links to the release notes in here as well. Okay. Um, the end of financial year process um, we recommend is that you check all your company details, your employer details, then Update your reportable fringe benefits, so doing a pay run for those, reconciling your payroll items, sending your finalisation and then updating your thresholds and caps. Those don't have to be done in those particular order. You can do your updates for your thresholds and caps and start a pay run for the 1st of July or later before sending your finalisation for the 2023-24 financial year. You just need to do your finalisation prior to the 12th of July. That's the deadline for sending your finalisation. So we'll just go through each of those now. So when you're checking your employee details, you want to make sure that they've got the correct last names and date of births, addresses, um, all those details need to be in there. And usually, if you've been submitting pay runs for these employees, it will um, fail on the STP submission if there's any missing details anyway. So check your STP submissions, make sure that they have actually all been approved and gone through. In the reportable French benefits, so you will need to add pay items if you haven't done this before. Most of you, I'm sure, have done these um, fringe benefits before, but if you haven't, let us know. We can help you set up your pay items. Um, you need to create a pay run 
it's a one-off pay and that pay run needs to have a start date no earlier than the 1st of April um, and a pay run end date no later than the 31st of March 2024 and that is because the FPT cutoff is of course the 31st of March. So the physical pay date should be the 31st of March. You need to not send it to the ATO. It won't lodge to the ATO as a fringe benefits pay only. Um, but it does get sent with your finalisation. Um, employees who are terminated that you need to do reportable fringe benefits for will need to have themselves, you need to reinstate their record and then include them in that pay run as well. But the pay run would need to be dated earlier than their termination date for those employees. So you may need to do a separate one-off pay um, for some terminated employees. You can then re-terminate those employees again afterwards. So the pay items that you need to set up, you need to be um, ticking in your setup payroll that with, if you're exempt from FBT, you need to tick that. Um, and then your non-cash benefits um, pay item needs to be set up. Now, you may need to set up a type one and a type two if you have benefits for both types. Um, type one, you can claim GST credits for, but type two is for benefits that are GST free or input taxed. On that pay run, We've talked about the dates, so we're going to be setting up that pay run, usually just one finishing the 31st of the 3rd, but again, a separate one if employees were terminated prior to that. And then once you've completed that FBT pay run, then you should do your reconciliation. Okay, we're going to go through this reconciliation now. Um, it's good practice to reconcile your payroll monthly um, and as such June is no different. Um, the only difference is that you will need to check that you've done those reportable fringe benefits, you checked your S, um, eligible termination payments and STP data is correct. And there is three main areas that you want to focus on when you're reconciling your payroll. So you want to check that the data in the payroll is correct, and that's where you would receive an error on STP submission if there was some missing, missing data there, okay? Um, you want to check that the postings in the GL match the payroll, so you'll need to run reports to compare to those GL postings and make sure that those balance up, and check that the outstanding balance of the payroll related to the balance sheet accounts in the GL and that they accurately reflect the, the balances at year end. So the three other areas that should also be looked at is your work cover, superannuation and payroll tax. You'll also need to reconcile your leave balances as well. So run the reports, compare the results, investigate any discrepancies, do journal entries to correct those variances and check that the setup is going to be correct for future. So if there's anything wrong in your setup, then you'll need to correct that moving forward so you don't keep having the same issues. If you're not sure, again, contact us and we can help you work through those. So you'll need to do all this before you run your STP finalisation. And as we've said there, any queries or issues, please log a case support. So to check the postings, um, you want to reconcile and troubleshoot variances. You'll need to understand the relationship between the payroll cost centres and the general ledger. So in your payroll setup, and I might just pull up my payroll screen. In your cost centres, these would have been set up. Now, this is just my demonstration company, so it might look very different to yours. 
but you can see where each of those cost centers is linked to a GL code. So if something doesn't appear to be posting to the correct place, I would start by looking there and seeing where these cost centers have been used on your pay items, on your employee defaults, or um, on your any of your deductions or allowances and how those are linked through, okay? So I'm just trying to find the screen. So you should regularly reconcile the balances in your payroll with what's been posted to the GL, particularly your leave balances, because leave adjustments, changes in pay rates, and any other reversals you do in pay runs don't necessarily get posted through to the GL. So if something is done within a pay run, it gets posted in your journal posting. But if you've done an adjustment to a leave balance, it's not going to do a correction through to your GL. That would be a manual adjustment that you need to do. So we always recommend after each and every pay run that you run a leave balances report that shows the valuation of that leave and then do any adjustments because of increases in pay rate or any other adjustments that have been done and make sure that that journal gets adjusted in your accounting system. Um, compare your cost centre analysis report with the GL account balances. And these different reports here are the ones that we would recommend that you run within payroll um, or obviously a trial balance within payroll versus your trial balance from your financials. And the general ledger and cost analysis report that you find in payroll will help you do those checks. As I was talking about with um, leave entitlements, I got a bit ahead of myself before. So reconciling your leave, you need to check that you have cleared all the leave accrued within EXO payroll for terminated staff. Um, because if you don't and they're included into your leave valuation reports, then obviously it's going to show a different balance than what is actually owed and what will be showing in your provision account. Um, if you don't take the leave out as you terminate staff and do those adjustments, your GL balance will be different to what's in showing in payroll. So it's very important you run the leave entitlements report before starting your phase first pay run of the financial year. Um, they can only be run, that report for the leave entitlement balances can only be run as a, the day that you run the report. We can't do a retrospective report, which is why we also recommend that you run it after each pay run to make sure that those accruals are happening correctly. Um, the run the leave balance report There's no dates, as I was saying. You need to include terminated employees to make sure that there's no remaining balances that need to be cleared out. You can see the values associated with each leave on this report. And there should be figures close to those values in your GL accounts. So this is where you need to do adjusting journals on a regular basis. Okay, so I'm just moving on for each leave types. The opening balance from the June last year leave report plus the leave accrued from the general ledger report, less any leave taken from that general ledger report should also equal the closing balance from June on this leave report as well. So just check those against each other. So correcting entries for your leave and reconciling those provisions might include it adjusting in payroll or clearing leave balances, journals for the differences, and using make sure you lose your leave balances report um, and your leave taken reports in conjunction with each other. So for your superannuation. You should have at least two superannuation GL accounts set up, one for the expense and one for your payables. 
And payments for superannuation should be made from the super payable account to your nominated clearing house so that it um, balances each other out. You should also have at least the following pay items set up. One for super guarantee, um, which is linked to your super expense and super payable, and super salary sacrifice, which is linked to your super payable account. Most of these you would already have set up, so that goes without saying, I'm sure. So the movement of your provisions account, less the payments made should match the movement of your superannuation transactions inquiry for that same period. So again, we recommend doing this regularly, um, probably each time you're doing a payment for your super, this should be done. So the reports that will help you reconcile your super are down the bottom there, super summary, the cost analysis and the trial balance. So each month or quarter when you are making those super payments, it should be clearing out your super payables account. If there's any remaining balances or discrepancies in there, then you need to investigate where the amounts are incorrect. Um, check how far back your variances go by reconciling against your payroll. And if you're doing that regularly, it makes it easier to track when that has happened. Find out why, where the variance is and use these reports that I've listed here to find your discrepancies. Um, and again, give us a call if you get stuck. Sometimes we find that an employee superannuation is going to the super expense account when it should go to the super payables account. So just check for that. So I'm going to show you the super funds and I'll show you how you can do a super adjustment. So if there's been an underpayment of super that you need to correct or an overpayment, um, then we can do an adjustment for that. This is a regular thing. Firstly, looking into your superannuations, you'd need to find the super guarantee item that that, that particular employee is using. And you would need to make sure that you have a super guarantee fixed amount pay item set up for that same super so that you can enter the amount that you want to adjust it by. So you would set up a super guarantee fixed dollar amount. Okay. Make sure that your risk is not ticked. Leave the amount at zero so you can adjust it in the pay run and make sure it's linked to the correct super provider and cost centre, the same as your super guarantee amount is. So this should all be set up essentially the same, except instead of having a percentage of gross pay, it would have a fixed dollar amount. And then when you enter that onto the pay run for that employee, you can just put in the dollar amount that you need to adjust that super by, and that will go through as reportable. If you're only doing super adjustments in a pay, don't submit to the ATO because it's going to be seen as a zero pay and won't submit anyway. But those amounts will be included in an update or finalisation that you do. Sorry, I just wanted to point out as well on those super guaranteed fix, make sure you check the liabilities are the same. They should just be payroll tax and won't cover on those. And you will need to set up a new one of those for each super fund that you're doing adjustments for. And they can be used on multiple employees that have those super funds. It's, a, it's in a good thing or a useful thing to have these pay items set up anyway, because if an employee does... Um, you know, give you the incorrect information or say an employee moves a super fund during a period, you may need to do a negative adjustment out of one super fund and put a positive amount for the same um, employee through to their new super fund if you've already processed it before they let you know that is. Just checking my notes, making sure I've covered everything. Okay, the 
Super summary report allows you to full the, view the full year of super contributions. Um, as your period batches will only give you the quarter or monthly amount. So you can see the total salary sacrifice and employee contributions on that super summary report. And they should also show in the general ledger report. So you can see that those match across. You can also see the total earnings liable in that general ledger report as well as the total um, overall contributions made. Okay. Is there any questions so far? I'm not seeing any in the chat. Okay. So the best practice end of period checklist is all the things we've been talking about. So make sure that you do your upgrade, compliance release before your first pay run in July. You can complete that yourself if you're not on a server environment. It, it's probably recommended that either your IT or Momentum assist you with that upgrade if you are running from a server environment as there can be permissions that can prevent things from running correctly and you do need access to the direct place that it's installed. So reach out if you'd like to book that in with us. Um, make sure you do your reportable fringe benefits, update any historical pays for working holiday makers. Most of that would have been done after the STP2 updates, but if you've had new working holiday makers come on and you want to just double check their details and make sure that their pays have been updated, you can do that up here. So in your single touch payroll, you can go and check either your income stream types for all your employees. But if you find that you've paid a working holiday maker and you didn't have their income stream type correct for all of their pays, you can update it in here. You'd have to find that employee. I don't particularly have one. <laughs> but you can go and see what all of the income stream types were against all of their pay runs. And if they weren't correct, you can tick the pay runs and change the income stream type for those pay runs or you can update the country code if that was not set um, before so that it will report correctly and click change when you need to do that. <clears throat> Print all your reports and do those reconciliations against your general ledger and do any adjustments that are required to make those balance the way that they should. Ensuring that if the source of those incorrect postings is an incorrect setup on a pay item, then of course you'll, you'll need to correct those as well moving forward. Um, I would always take a backup and isolate that with your IT or your support, um, sorry, your your server locations, just to isolate that back up as an end of financial year one so that you know where you can find that and then lodge and send your finalisation to the ATO. I'll just show you where you can do that. So once you're happy that everything is reconciled, you can go up into your single touch payroll and do a finalisation. It automatically ticks all of the employees and it's showing the current period up the top here. If you need to send a finalisation for a prior year, you can choose up to five or six prior financial years there. And then once you're happy, you just click send to the ATO and it will send that finalisation through. It will appear in your, your submissions list. Sorry. On my demo system, I don't do finalisations or send anything to the ATO, so there's nothing showing, but you'll see that in your list as you would have normally been used to seeing what the status of those submissions are. It's a call. And if you like, um, you can lock down the end of financial year. That's a good idea to do if you've got multiple employees working in payroll and you want to make sure nobody goes back and does any further adjustments or accidentally creates a pay run with the prior year dates, um, a lockdown will prevent that from happening. 
and you can do that in the setup. And it's in the other setup. And there's your financial year lock down there. So mine's a bit old, hasn't been done for a while. <laughs> but as I said there, that's optional. And again, there's a link to my ops and full end of you um, instructions there as well. We've discussed, do your last pay event, do all your reconciliations and then send your finalisation. You can resubmit a finalisation if an employee um, notices that there's a discrepancy. You can readjust, do an adjustment for that employee and resend a finalisation just for that one employee or for multiple employees if you want to. So as I was showing before, that's where your finalisation is done. That's where you can close off the year. Don't forget to update your max super contributions based ETP, child support, new payroll tax. And again, those are all on our checklist that you'll see there. The release notes also have details of where to do these updates, so you can look at those. Um, did I get you back? Oh. The configuration relating to compliance is only examples, of course. Everything's a bit different for your systems than it is for our demo. So if you have any queries about anything, um, or if there is a query about the way that an item is reporting to the ATR, we would recommend that you get that advice from your registered BAS or tax agent or refer to the ATO's website for any questions you might have in regards to those um, as we're not allowed to offer advice. Your payroll team is, of course, myself, Cathy, who most of you know, and Greg, who's joined us in the last couple of years. So give us a um, log of support request, give us a hoi if you need anything and we'll be available to help you with that. There are end financial year guides, um, links to those on our website. Um, Morgan has set up a beautiful landing page for all your 2024 end of financial year stuff for EXO, both payroll and business. And there's links to each of those resources on the screen there and also on our web page. Those are all available there. If you haven't already, I've already said, <laughs> being in, um, there's also an end of financial year guide that's going to be available and those links as well. And it's time for questions, if anybody has any. Ready to unmute your microphone, just speak up, you don't want to time. Okay, so there's a question here from Benita um, on how you clear out leave for terminated employees. So you would need to reinstate the employee. So I'll just go to my payroll screen. If you go to your employees, I don't have any terminated employees. <laughs> okay, I'm just going to terminate someone very quickly. There is a reinstate button that appears up here, but if an employee has been terminated, um, you can re click the reinstate button up there. What you need to do is reinstate them as at their original start date. That's very important because we don't want to change the dates in the system that they started or that they were terminated. So you'll reinstate as at their original start date, go into their leave entitlements, and you can go and um, check what the balances are and then you would need to do an adjustment for that. So in the current lead group that's open, you can do an adjusted hours here and reduce that back down to zero. If there's multiple employees you want to do this for, reinstate them all. And you can also go into the leave entitlement adjustment screen, which is in the utilities menu. And in here you can see all of the employees, once they're reinstated, um, terminated employees don't show here, so you need to reinstate first. 
And then you can do an adjusted accrual. So do an adjustment in it, the blue column and just change that balance. So if this was um, annual leave, most annual leave gets paid out on terminations. It's probably not a good example, but your long service leave, for example, like here we've got a negative amount, you might want to adjust that back up. But say this employee was terminated before they were entitled to their long service leave, then you would just do a negative adjustment in there and then um, that would correct the long service lien back to zero. Okay, and then of course run your lead balances report again and make sure that you that that is reflecting in your GL what the balances should be. Um, sorry, there's another one. What does the compliance update do? It updates the tax tables that the ATO have released for the new financial year. It updates the Medicare levy rates and stuff that's built into those tax tables. So that's very important to have that in so that the new tax um, levels are calculated correctly for your PAYG. As I said, it will prompt you to update your superannuations from your standard 11% to 11.5%. So that's going to prompt you for those updates. Um, those are the main three things that it does. Just remember when you do update your super funds, it does this recalculation. So just a little tip, if you've got a lot of them, is to go all the way to the beginning, till it says that's the first record, and scroll through them this way, updating your max earnings basis as you go. And then once you've gone all the way through, then hit exit once because it will recalculate each and every time if you exit in between, which can take a while for some people. <laughs> Is there anything else? Okay, well, thanks very much everyone for attending. If you have any follow-up questions, feel free to give us a call or log a support case. Um, or ping back to this chat and I will be in touch with you, okay? Thank you very much, everyone.